Hi all, welcome back to the Worldland. In this video, I'm going to discuss a very magical, tricky result from the topic percentages. So it's a highly applicable, useful result. So that is constant product rule. First, you have to make a clear idea about the application value of this result. So this is a variation wise result and I will give a very simple example. Suppose we just consider. So if we are increasing the speed by 100%, what percentage of time we can save while covering a constant distance? If we are increasing the speed by 100%, if the distance is constant, what percentage of time that we can save? It's a very simple example. You can easily catch the answer without considering any kind of additional mathematical concepts. So while increasing the speed by 100%, it means we are doubling the speed. So what is the resultant or the after effect? So while we are doubling the speed, we know that time consumption, it's become half. Half in the sense we can save 50%. So that is the actual concept behind this constant product rule. In which are the other situations also we can apply the same calculation concept? Suppose we just consider if a contractor assigned 100% more workers for the completion of a certain project, what percentage of time he can save? There are also the same result, 100% increase in the number of workers or the efficiency that will reduce the time by 50%. In the similar way, the price of a commodity is increased by 100%. Then what percentage of deduction in its consumption to keep the same expenditure. They are also the same thing. Suppose we just went the price of sugar is increased by 100%, means it's become double. So then what change you have to make in your consumption to keep the same expenditure? You have to reduce your consumption by 50%. So that's the application of this constant product rule. Once you are familiar with this easiest trick, or the application method, you can easily catch these kinds of all the questions instantly. So it's a time-saving approach. That's why I already mentioned that it's as a magical result. Then in similar way, here we got the idea if 100% increase in the first quantity, so it will make a corresponding decrease of 50% in the second quantity. So it's a very usual example, very easily you can catch this variation, related variation. In the similar way, can you guess what is the result in the second example? If the quantity is increased by 50%, then what should be the corresponding decrease on the second component or the second quantity? Can you guess? Most of the students or the aspirants will reach a conclusion that if this quantity is increased by 50%, the corresponding decrease will be 25%. That's a normal logical pattern because this 50 is half of 100, half of this 100. Therefore, while we are applying the same logic for the second set of example, there also we may think like that. This is simply half of this value, but it's not correct. Clear? That you have to apply a very important result. So that result I will explain here. Suppose the first component is increased by R percent. It's increased by R percent. What kind of a variation or decrease that you have to make on the second component to keep the product of both the components be equal. Don't forget, we need the product as a constant. If it is speed and this is time, 
then we know that speed into time equal to distance. If this is the number of workers, if this is the number of days, then product of those two components will give the quantity of work, price of a commodity and the consumption quantity. The product will result into the expenditure. In the similar way, in geometry also there are applications. If it is the length of a rectangle and it's the breadth of the rectangle, the variations. So the similar way, because we know that length into breadth will make the area. So in these kinds of all the product related situations, this result is applicable. If the quantity 1 is increased by a percent, then what is the required percentage of decrease on the second quantity? The result is very simple. R by 100 plus R into 100 percent. Got it? So the result is very simple. If the first quantity is increased by R percent, then corresponding decrease on the second quantity, that is R by 100 plus R into 100 percent. So we can apply that result in the second example. Here, 50 percent. So this is 50 by 100 plus 50. So how it will become 150 into 100. Got it? Here we know that after simplifying these values, this is simply 1 by 3 into 100. As we know, this 1 by 3 is nothing but 33 and 1 by 3 percent. Got it? So the final result is, if 50 percent increase on the first component, the corresponding decrease on the second component is 33 and 1 by 3 percent. In a similar way, you can apply the next result also. If it is increased by 25 percent. So this will be 25 by 100 plus 25. That's equal to 125 into 100. So here 25 by 125. After simplification here we know that this is 1 by 5 into 100. We can easily catch this variation is 20 percent. Got it? That's the simple logic. 25% increase on the first component will result a corresponding decrease on the second component that is 20%. We can easily find out the second half of this result. If it is increase and this is the corresponding decrease. Similarly, if the first component is decreased by R person, can you guess what is the required change that we have to make on the result? Yeah, it's very easily you can conclude this is R by 100 minus R. Instead of this plus, this is minus R into 100 percent increase. Got it? This is R by 100 minus R into 100 percent increase. With the help of this very important result, you can catch the answer for this question. Here, this is 10 percent decrease. So how we have to consider 10 by 100 minus 10. So that's equal to 90 into 100. So as we know this is 1 by 9 into 100. So we are quite familiar with this value 1 by 9 is 11 and 1 by 9 percent increase. So with the help of this result you can easily conclude this type of a calculation B if 10% decrease in speed will increase the time consumption for covering a constant distance as 11 and 1 by 9 percent. It's a frequently testing type of question. So you can try the last example here 25% decrease in the first component. So it will become 25 by 100 minus 25, that is 75, into 100. As we know, this is 25 by 75. A simplified value is 1 by 3 into 100. It's a most familiar, common value. What is 1 by 3? 1 by 3 is nothing but 33 and 1 by 3 percent increase. Clear?
It's a magical result. In so many different situations, you can apply this result effectively. So once again, I will explain the result here. Here, this is the concept of constant product. While we are considering two components, the basic situation, the product of those two components should be a constant. So then we can check which are the situations. I already explained the concept here, distance. So distance equal to speed into time. A variation occurred on speed that will result a corresponding variation on inverse variation of the second component. And the quantity of work, that is efficiency. Don't forget, this efficiency means the number of workers and load. Got it? Into time. Got it? Yes. So then, the next one. Expenditure. Expenditure is equal to price into consumption. Got it? So these are the main three types of variations or the product results. So in these kinds of all the product results, you can apply the same concept. Don't forget in geometry also, it has a large set of applications. I will explain that point. Length increased by a certain person for keeping the same area. What is the percentage of decrease that you have to make on its breadth? That we are applying this magical result, constant product rule. So here, if the first component is increased by R percent, the corresponding required decrease on the second quantity, that is R by 100 plus R into 100 percent. If the first component is decreased by R percent, the corresponding increase that you have to make on the second component, that is R by 100 minus R into 100 percent. It's easy to remember. If it is an increase, you have to add on the, denom in the denominator. If it is a decrease, you have to make a subtraction on the denominator. So only two types of operations there, then you can easily catch it. It's a very useful result. So whenever you are facing such a situation, you can effectively apply this result. Thanks for watching.